Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today's video, I'm just going to do, I'll talk you through a quick overview of what I did with my tank on maintenance days. First of all, what I like to do is feed, feed everything, feed quite heavy as well, um, because I'm obviously going to do a water change. It's beneficial to get to do that feed so that when I do the water change, it can take out any excess nutrients that are still in the water column. So, as you might have known or heard from previous videos, I tend not to feed flake or pellets. I always prefer to use um, frozen foods or live if I've got it. So I have my designated feeding jar. I just come in and take some water. And then once I've got some water in that jar, I'll go over to the freezer and get some cubes. So these are a few of the different foods that I feed. Um, BC UK Aquatics. Marine Feast, it's got all sorts in there, all mixed in, um, that's, what's, that's what's in them, so there's a mix of spirulina, mysis, brine, chopped clam, all sorts of stuff. The particles are quite small in this, um, which if you've got bigger fish, it's usually not ideal, but as you know I've got antiers, uh, clowns, bang eyes, hogfish, so they all absolutely love this. Sometimes I end up getting the gamma um, packs. They've got mysis, brine, krill, seaweed and chopped clam in there as well, but they're obviously all separate, so depending on the days I do mix it up. As you can see, don't tend to use the seaweed as much. I do put nori in for the tank, um, but I don't know, nothing seems to be that keen on it in the frozen packs. And then krill, just for the couple of the bigger fish, like the main, um, the female clown and the tang and things like that. But everything, everything seems to go for that anyway. So I'll get some of these dispensed into the jar. So because I know it's uh, watch change day, I put four cubes in. I put two of the marine feast. I put one mysis and one krill. Back at the tank, I always wait for it to dissolve. Um, well, not dissolve, but just to melt away a bit. While I'm doing this, gives me another chance to, to do a quick count up of all the fish. Have a browse, make sure everything's doing all right. And yeah, I think it is. There's a couple of things. Obviously the, the Duncan's still not happy. I think I'm gonna need to take them out soon and, and dip them, try and move them around a bit. No idea what's going on with them, but a bit annoying. So yeah, let's get, oh God, I use a turkey baster to mix everything up. And then once, once there's a decent amount in, try not to spill any anywhere. But then as soon as it's in the tank, you can see all the fish start going nuts, they know what's about to come. I don't always turn my flow off. I know it's it's a bit risky. Some people like to turn the flow off so they can see that and make sure that all the particles of food are, are being consumed. I just like the fish. I like to see the fish going absolutely nuts for it, lying around the tank. And it also gives opportunities because I have, you know, my engineer go view stays on the bottom. He rarely comes up to the top for food. So by leaving that flow on, it means that that food's being blown around the tank and, and he'll get some. The algae blend he likes to stay pretty hidden as well. Where if the flow is off, he can often spend time just at the back and miss all the feeding. Crabs and the hermits, obviously there's plenty in this tank, so by keeping the flow on, that some of that food will blow into harder reaches, reach places for the fish. 
big deal. There's plenty of inverts in here that go around and, and scoop all that up. You can just see the coral banded shrimp or the boxing shrimp at the back there. He obviously stays hidden. Usually always upside down underneath that, that rock. Fire shrimp is somewhere. He's usually at the back down there. You can just see his antennas. Peppermint shrimp, I have absolutely no idea where they are. I haven't seen them for a while. Uh, but then again, once the lights go off, I don't usually come down and check on the tank. I did for the first week that I put the peppermints in. But I haven't seen so I don't know. They could be in here. They might not be. They might have both died. I'm not sure. But obviously there is three different species of shrimp in here as well, which when I spoke to other people, they said that the boxing shrimp will kill the others. But so far, he's not gone for the blood shrimp. So I don't know. That's one little bit of food gone in. Um, usually put a bit more in not too much because I do tend to feed multiple times throughout the day but because it's water change day I'll probably feed a bit heavier in the start and then just save a little bit for later on this evening but these fish never get full they will always chase it around, eat as much as they can, which again I'm, I'm quite happy about, I like to see fat healthy fish. These, the, the bang guys were quite small when I got them, when I picked them up and they're starting to put some size on now, which is ideal. So once I've made sure all the, the fish have got some food, that's when I'll look at start feeding the corals. And I'm usually try and wait to see some sort of feeding response from the lobo. See some tentacles, as soon as I start seeing some feeding tentacles come out, that's when I'll start looking at um, getting some coral food in. You see that acan there. He's got his feeding tentacles out now, he's ready. You can taste it in the water. So I'll start mixing up what I use for feeding the corals. So two, maybe three times a week, I'll use Reefroids. Uh, I've got my pot of water here. Try and make it into a, a paste. Tend not to do too much um, on other days. You know, it's just because today I know that I'm doing a, a water change that I'll use a bit more. And then Vitalis LPS coral pellets. Brilliant soft pellets. I've had these in the garage, as you can see. So that's where my marine fish keeping hobby started. I did it all out of my garage. Yeah, these, these are brilliant pellets. Nice and soft. The fish love them too. So I'll sprinkle some in there. stinky stuff I don't always put that much in but I'll add it give it a bit of a mix and then add a bit more and obviously if there's still if I feel like there's too much I don't have to use it all I'm not precious about it I don't mind throwing it away I'd rather throw it away than just dump everything into the tank because although we're doing a water change it's still only you know, 20%, something like that. So there's still gonna be a lot of this food left over. But yeah, just give it, give it a mix. While I'm waiting for that. 
I'll turn everything off in the tank. So I'll start with the MP10. Sorry about the mess in here. It is on my to-do list to tidy up. The MP10 off and then the main two power heads at the back. Instant silence. So while we're waiting for the water to slow down, just again come back to the low bow. The camera's picking that up. Tentacles are out now. Do need to scrape the glass. There's some uh, some detritus building up on there. A bit of film. As soon as the all the all the wave makers go off and the power heads go off, it just looks stunning. It spreads out so big. So now everything's settled. Come back to the little potion that we've made up for the corals. I do need to modify the end of this. For these pellets, although they are soft, they do block up the entrance. So, usually, I'll start down the bottom, start with a low bow, and then work my way up and get the zoas fed. Start seeing a mucus layer. I've not put my filter on the camera. There we go. This should be a bit better. The uh, Lobo's got his, and then the Zoas. Zoas absolutely love reefroids. Make sure they've got a good a good coating. To be honest, if I didn't have Zoas, I probably wouldn't even feed refroids. I'd just feed pellets. Give the gunny some. Of the things that I can see, most of the zoas that I've got. Obviously, at times I do miss some. I try and avoid getting it close to any aptasias, which is obviously impossible. But I still try. I like to tell myself to try. with it, just give everything a, a good dusting. We start at the top, obviously I know I've had say that I feed the bottom first, but that's just the, the LPS, and then I try, try to come to the top of the rock so that then anything that falls down, it falls down onto the, the zoas and stuff below it. Try not to feed these horrible brown pallies. I do plan on getting rid of them at some point. It's just what I use to get rid of them. Um, I know some people use like a calquasa paste. I don't have calquasa paste or calquasa for that reason, for that thing. Um, 
Some people use lemon juice or Aptasia X. I don't have any of them. So, whether I try a bit of manual removal, I don't know, but I need to get them out and I need to get them out soon. Back down to the bottom, give these Duncans plenty. But yeah, I think that'll do. I'll obviously just chuck the rest of them pellets in for everything else. Luckily today, the the wrasse has been quite well behaved. This last time I was feeding the lobo, the ras just came and started taking all of that, all of that mucus that's caught the rephroids and the pellets. The ras just came and scooped all that up, which was rather annoying because. Lobos, in my opinion, definitely do need feeding. It certainly doesn't harm them. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right on cue. That's very annoying. I do think that he's, he's managed, the Lobos managed to get some of that in. But yeah, so, tank looks really hazy. Plenty of particles still floating about, so I'll probably give it about five, ten minutes, let things settle in, let them corals absorb that, and then what I'll do is turn all the power heads back on, turn the wave maker back on, give it probably half an hour, and then I will come back with the water change, including filter floss. I don't need to change carbon today. Hi guys, so it's been it's been a couple of hours. My water's up to temperature. Everything's settled down in the tank. So how I do my water changes is turn all the pumps off. And then we actually turn the wave maker off from feeding. I've got a an empty 25 litre barrel which I use for all my dirty water. As you can see it's not, not that pleasant, it's all for waste water. So once I've got all the um, all the pumps and everything off, I take my turkey baster and I just like to blow everything off the rocks just to give everything a, a decent blow off and then you, you can see that obviously this dislodges all the crap that's in there to think no matter how good you how good your wave makers are how good your return point tank got everything loosened off and depending on how how everything's looking I would sometimes go around with a, a toothbrush now and give everything a scrub but I'm not going to do that today I've not really got time I've got other things to be doing so I'll just leave that until the next water change that I do just use a cheap and cheerful uh, siphon I have had other ones in the past, but from selling tanks and setting up again, I've ended up uh, giving them away and stuff like that. So I'll just end up using this one. But it's quite easy to get going. And the benefits of using a barrel is rather than buckets, I used to use buckets. Thank you. 
Ready to be picked up by the new uh, clean sponges and the new clean filter plots. So get the lid, lid closed back down, sorry for the noise. Get the pumps back on. And that's, that's how I do my maintenance. I'll get a video a bit later on and show you how well it clears up because it, it usually only takes an hour or so. But as you can see, all that disturbance has really clouded up the water, but it's not an issue, not for me. Thanks guys and I'll, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll upload well, I'll video the next bit and you'll see it after this bit. Right guys, so we're just rejoining the tank. This is a couple of hours after the water change that we did. As you can see, it's looking a lot better, a lot clearer. I've not done a, a water test. I'll try and get that done in the next couple of days. Just make sure everything's all right. I've checked the salinity and obviously I checked that before we swapped and, and that matched. So yeah, everything's looking good. I'm hoping that if the fish move out of the way, you can still see some of the, the hair algae around. But I'm hoping over the next week or two, we can start to get rid of that as much as we can. The only thing that we're then left with is these Aptasias, which are beginning to do my head in. Again, unsure on whether the peppermint shrimp are doing the job or not. It's it's quite hard to tell. And actually, I, I don't even know where they are. I don't even know if they're still alive and in the tank. So could be sort of flogging a dead, dead horse there. If they are, I'm going to try and. It's the weekend now, so I'm going to try and come down in the middle of the night um, and see if see if there's any sign of them. If I can't see any of them out this weekend, then I think what I'll do is look at getting some nudibranchs and take it from there. I don't know what the best method would be. because so obviously we've got the, uh, the peacock grass so I don't know whether 
I would set up a little tank with an air stone and a heater, put the new debranks in because I, ideally I want to keep the cost down as low as possible. So set up another tank, just add a couple in and then as they lay eggs and, and grow up I can then add more into this tank or whether I just take the, take the plunge and and you know buy buy maybe four put them in this tank and hope that that works but I'm not sure like I said I'll, I'll check over the next couple of days see if I can see the peppermint shrimps hopefully I can but then really I can't necessarily say that I'm seeing them do the job so I don't know I did wonder if they was the reason my Duncans looked like they did because when I have been down in the middle of the night and seen them they've been hanging around around here so it's I don't know the closest LPS food source I know they do like to go for the fleshy types but I don't know so yeah that's the maintenance on this tank guys and a little bit of a chat if you enjoyed it obviously give us a like give us a follow um, and watch out for late next videos thank you